and the Bears have extended the non-exclusive franchise tag on Jalen Johnson. So the franchise tag, for anybody who may just have a vague understanding or none, is how an NFL team can decide to retain one player who is otherwise going to be an unrestricted free agent, and you agree to sign them for a set contract for one year, and it is the average of the top five paid players at their position. Top 10. Top 10, thank top you. Top 10, yeah. Average of the top 10 paid players at their position. So for the for a cornerback that is slated at over $19 million. 19.802. And we know and Jalen's it, wanted 21 or 22, something like that. And it's, it's fully guaranteed. So, but what happens now is Jalen won't sign it and they get to continue to negotiate and since it's technically the non-exclusive tag, this will not happen, but someone could enter into negotiations with Jalen Johnson's agent, sign him to a deal, and if the Bears chose not to match, that team would have to give up two first-round picks for Jalen Johnson in addition to signing him to a contract that the Bears won't have. So that will not happen. Jalen's not going to – no team is going to try to sign Jalen Johnson to a 20 million per year contract and give up two first round picks for the privilege to do so. So mm. this basically buys the bears four plus months to continue to negotiate a long-term deal with Jalen Johnson. One more big picture thing on the tag. We often have these conversations about which position is the most valuable yeah. in the NFL. The tag tells you which top 10 players are averaging the highest salary. Yes. So number one is, of course, quarterback at $38 million. Number two is a surprise to me. Linebacker at $24.007 million. Counts. Counts. Uh, edge rushers. Edge rushers, right? So there that, that, that counts. The, that, the, the Micah Pars, the TJ Watts of the world. It's a good call. Uh, yeah. Number three is wide receiver at 21.8. Defensive tackle. Oh, oh, sorry. Defensive tackle is number three at 22.1. Then it's wide receiver. Then defensive end. So, uh, yeah, interior. And then the lowest ones, punter and kicker, yeah. is a little less than $6 million. And then it's running back, $11.951 million. Tight end just above that. But in terms of salary value for the top 10, that's how the league values them at this point. Poll's position is brought to you by Black Diamond Plumbing and Mechanical there when you need us. So Jalen Johnson has been extended the franchise tag. My guess is he's a little disappointed about that, even if he's not surprised. And we're going to get to his own words here in a second. But here is how Ryan Poles addressed Jalen Johnson at the end of the season. We have really good communication. Uh, you know, the big thing was just kind of take a break here after the season, um, and then we'll start talks again. I feel really good about that situation. Um, Jalen's not going to go anywhere, um, and we'll work through to get something done. So not going to go anywhere was a pretty good indication that this was the worst-case scenario was going to be the tag, if not the full deal. Well, right, because then at the Combine – Ryan Poles started playing poker, and he started playing poker publicly, and we read right through it at the time. Jalen Johnson. Um, in the process of getting Jalen Johnson done, um, conversations are going well at this time. Uh, we feel like we've done a really good job um, kind of coming to the table strong, um, showing the respect um, that he's due just in terms of his production through his career, and really an emphasis on the turnovers that he created this past year. Our expectation is that's going to continue to go um, as he's with the Bears. Um, when I say coming strong, it means cash flows are strong, guarantees are strong. Uh, the term is strong for him. Um, being hit with his age, uh, there's a really good opportunity for him to go back to the market again um, and continue to earn money and play well, and hopefully that's with the Bears for a long period of time. So I'm excited about that. Uh, like I've said about those deals all the time, it takes two to tango, and you got to find a, a place that everyone feels comfortable with. So. Uh, I feel really good about that situation. Right. In terms of Jalen Johnson, you said things are, are going well with him. Do you think it's more likely that there is a long-term deal with him than the franchise tag? I hope so. I'd like to avoid the franchise tag uh, for him. I think there's a really good space uh, for us to find a middle ground. Um, again, we always have the tag to, to use, um, but I really would like to, to get something done long-term with him. So as soon as he said... We're in the process of getting that done. 
I was like, ooh, I don't know if I believe you. Uh, because that that is just, if, if you were in the process of getting it done, you would just get it done and then announce a new contract at the Combine. Like, he was speaking for Jalen there. We're in the, we're the process of getting it done. Jalen Johnson. Um, in the process of getting Jalen Johnson done. I was like, nope, 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 nope. And now... Because that's public negotiation. Yes. It was, that wasn't, and it was exciting to hear. It was a super positive thing to hear at first. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. He's just kind of talking about the fairness of the offer. And he ex- included other details like, oh, maybe he could be a free agent again in his prime at the end of this deal. Which we talked about the day that happened. There, there are two ways to look at the highest paid cornerback in the NFL. There is who makes the most money per year. That's Jair Alexander of the Packers, who gets $21 million per year. But only $30 million of his four-year $84 million contract was guaranteed when he signed it. So it's very high. It's four-year $84 million deal, $30 million guaranteed. But he's an easy guy to cut. Not that they will, but easy guy to cut. Denzel Ward, he makes a little bit less money per year. $20 million instead of twenty one, million. But he got $71 million guaranteed. He got five years, a hundred million dollars, with seventy-one guaranteed. So, if Jalen wants to be paid at the top of the market, which one of those is he wanting to be paid at? Denzel Ward. Any NFL player will say it, the, the the real number in the contract is the guarantee. Jair Alexander got thirty million guaranteed. Denzel Ward got seventy-one million guaranteed. That's an ocean-sized gap between the two contracts. And so, when Paul says our offer is competitive and it lets him hit the free agent market sooner. That tells me four-year deal instead of five-year deal. And also, that's his sweet spot so far is four-year deals, right? Komet's extension, four years. The Montez Sweat extension, yeah, four years. That's a good point. So, you know, and, and it, it makes sense if you're a GM. We talk about it with the Cubs all the time. You want to stay flexible, and so you lean on things to try and have the, 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 the smallest amount for the, for the most years. It seems to be what Poles wants. So it'll be very interesting to see, and Jalen – uh, you know, we've we've reached out today to see if he wants to talk, but it will be very interesting to see if he puts out any smoke signal to us or elsewhere about how close his camp believes they are to Ryan Poles' offer. Well, because Ryan Poles made it sound like they're close, it's competitive, we're in the process of getting it done. Well, if you're offering Jair Alexander and he wants Denzel Ward... You're not close. You're not close. But they've got him. They, they, they've got him because they've, they've tagged him. They've got him for this year. And they can still negotiate now for the next few months and maybe just yep. get it done in the summer yep. and deal with that. But Jalen has shown a willingness to bet on himself. He's shown a willingness to go hard line. What I always wonder is if the player's upset in a moment like this when they get the franchise tag. You know, And we had the... Good fortune to talk to Jalen and ask him how he would feel if uh, if he was given the tag. Um, I mean, money's still good. I can't say that. The <laughs> nice. Yeah, money is still good. <laughs> money yeah, is still so, good. I mean, I mean, there's pros and cons to it, of course. I mean, of course, with the tag, there's pretty much a one year deal. Not so much, I would say, uh, stability as far as like the future, things like that. I mean, you're playing a one year deal with no contract. What if you get injured? Da da da. But I mean. I don't. I don't think about innocent stuff like that. And I thought even if they tag me, it's okay. To me, the tag is going to be still going to be good money. It's going to be a lot of money at that. So I mean, clearly that's where my value is. I feel like if you tag me, then you're pretty much telling me where my value is. So I feel like even after that, it's like okay, well, when I go to negotiate now, in the sense I already have my floor where yep. where I'm. So I mean, it has it has its pros and cons, but. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't doubt that they'll, not even doubt, I don't think that they'll let me go. I'm not saying I want them to let me go, but I feel like that we'll, we'll get some worked out. I, I'm, I'm sure of. So he's got a floor. So Jalen Johnson, congratulations for being guaranteed to make $19 million next year. And he's <laughs> made $8.3 million in his career so far. So he's so this is, more than double. This is life changing, generational wealth. We know how involved he is as a father and how much he loves his daughter. This this deal today that he has not accepted, that he hasn't signed, that does underpay him and all of those things, it is 
guaranteeing that in one year of work, he will more than double all of the money that he's made playing professional football. You know what I'm thinking about is how his brother it was a DB in college and his dad was a defensive back in college. Yeah. And when he goes home and he stays with them, they sit around and talk about technique. Like they, th- this is, this is what he's always wanted to do. This yeah. is, this is the family business uh, of sorts. And he became good enough at it to get a college scholarship and to be drafted in the second round. And now has proven he's better than a second round corner. He's up there as, you know, an incredibly high quality corner, second team, all pro. And I, I, you know, and he's guaranteed this amount, which is wonderful. And hopefully it's a a lot more because that dude deserves it. He does. So this was the obvious move for Ryan Poles. His game of public negotiation clearly did not work. Um, Jalen did not cave to it. And now I am just very interested to see if Jalen Johnson feels insulted by Ryan Poles' offers. Jalen says he wants to be the highest paid guy in the league at the position. If they're coming in on a four-year deal like Jair Alexander, they're not meeting him where he is. So it, But if it's above Jair's average, they can say that they are. They, no, they can, they can say that they are, for sure. And, and, if, and if you're Jalen, if that's what they're offering, don't you end up signing that as opposed to just taking your one year and risking the injury as he referenced? It depends what the guarantee is. It depends what the guarantee is. If the guarantee is just over the $30 million that Jair got, probably not. If if they say I don't know, it, I mean if if it's thirty five mil and the average is twenty two or whatever, so if both the average and the guarantee is above Jair, maybe you have to realize that this is the way that a lot of the league wants to do business, and it's the way that Ryan Poles wants to do business. I'd say, and you're on the come as I, a team. I'd look at Tredavious like Tredavious White. He's getting seventeen million per year, so it's less than what Jalen is going to get for this year. But he got fifty five million guaranteed on a four year deal. Like I'd be I'd be more interested in that if I'm Jalen Johnson than uh the Jair Alexander deal. Like, yes, it is more money per season, but the actual guarantee, protection from injury, all of that stuff, I would think that he would want a pretty high number guaranteed. So once you're franchised, you can also be traded, right? Yes. Because this is the uh the other cornerback that got franchise tagged is Legarius Sneed of the Chiefs. And I've seen the reporting around that. Uh, be that this might be precursor to a trade because they have to get something done with Chris Jones yep. on the D-line, and they don't think they can afford to pay Chris Jones what he deserves along with what they're giving Mahomes and what they're giving Kelsey, et cetera, yep. and might not be able to keep Legereus Sneed. So that's theoretically on the table once you've franchised a guy. I don't, I don't think they'll trade Jalen Johnson. I don't think so either. I mean, they've flatly said he's, he's not, not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. And they've drafted corners, and they've drafted seemingly pretty well at corner. But you think Tyreek Stevenson's ready to be a number one corner in the NFL? It's pretty. He's pretty good. I, I don't think that I would. I don't think that I would do that, um, especially in this year when you're going to have very high hopes, even if the quarterback is a rookie. Just saw a rookie quarterback lead the it, team to the playoffs. You got you got premium positions on cheap deals, like you can. You can afford to pay Jalen Johnson, and Jalen Johnson deserves to be paid. If trading for Ryan Bates means they can't hold on to Jalen Johnson, it, it, does, yeah, it, it def- doesn't mean that. It, it definitely doesn't. It doesn't mean that.